Imposter, you're an imposter. You're not a real dog trainer. You're an imposter because you suffer from the imposter syndrome. This video is gonna be talking a little bit about that whole thing, about if you're a dog trainer, especially if you're in, probably a new dog trainer, that's why you feel like an imposter. Hard to imagine people that have been doing this for 30 years still feel like an imposter. Who knows, could happen. But let's kind of break it down. But first, a word from our sponsors, this guy, for burningdirect.com, Burning Direct, the dog trainer marketing agency. And if you've got a dog training business and you're lying in bed at night wondering how do I get from where I am right now to where I've always dreamed of being with my dog training business, what do I need to get a consistent stream of desperate dog owners calling me each and every day, each and every week, each and every month? I found that Google Ads is one of the best ways to get a consistent stream of good quality leads, not just leads, but actually people with money in hand ready to pay for what you have to offer. The problem with Google Ads is that it's insanely complicated, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can burn through a lot of money really quickly. That's where we come in at Burning Direct. We offer a 100% done-for-you solution. All you have to do is make sure you pick up the phone or reply to your emails because your phone is going to be ringing off the hook. All right, three points I'd like to make about the imposter syndrome as it relates to you, the dog trainer. Point number one, don't be an imposter. You know, if you've gone through one of these weekend courses to teach you how to be a professional dog trainer, you're an imposter. If you think that watching just every episode of Caesar Milan, The Dog Whisperer, and you're going to start up a dog training business, or you have started up a dog training business, let me break it to you, you're an imposter. So don't be an imposter. Go through the process. Put the time in. Invest in yourself and do the hard work it's going to take to get to the point where you can actually be out there and helping people and not be an imposter. So that's number one. So how to do that is really beyond the scope of this video, but I'll give you some quick examples like dog trainer school or finding a really good professional dog trainer that you can apprentice under. Maybe somebody who isn't in your city, so you're not going to be in direct competition with that person necessarily. Um, there are associations you can join. There are seminars you can go to. There are even courses and books and stuff you can read online that will provide um, a little bit of context or assistance to what you're learning. But really what it comes down to is time spent with hands-on dogs. You're really going to need to probably be, have trained 50 to 100 dogs at least before you get to the point where you feel like, you know, I'm starting to see some patterns and really know what I'm doing. So number two, dos. If you've already done the previous, you've already gone through a dog trainer school or you've apprenticed with another dog trainer, maybe you've even worked as a dog trainer under another a more experienced dog trainer. And now you've set up your own business and you're out there doing it. Congratulations. But you still feel like an imposter because it's not your program. You're kind of adapting what you've learned, but you haven't really made it your own yet. And you're not really sure about you know, what do I do in this situation? I don't have my mentor sitting right behind me telling me, you know, you need more slack in the in the leash or, you know, you turn, turn the, the stem up a little bit, whatever it may be. You're out on your own without any training wheels at this point. And you've trained maybe 10 or 12 dogs or whatever it is and you still kind of feel like an imposter. Well, here's the good news. You are on the right track. It just takes more time. You're just going to have to buckle up and you know work with more clients and go through that process I promise you it'll come you'll get to the point where again it comes down to pattern recognition you start seeing the same types of dogs come through your front door the same types of owners with the same types of issues and once you've gone through that process and you've troubleshot it then you, you start having more uh, more of a depth of knowledge to draw from for how to address those issues as they're coming in with with new clients and as you do it the more you do it the more you, you get confidence in yourself and your skills and that's when you see that whole imposter thing that whole imposter syndrome start to disappear as you acquire more confidence in your skill set number three let's say you've trained lots of dogs let's say you're at a point where you really know what you're doing you know how to answer all the questions you're pretty confident that you can get positive results with most of the dogs that walk through your front door but for whatever reason, you still don't feel like a dog trainer. You still feel like an imposter. You look at these other dog trainers and they're they're off, you know, they're working with clients. And when they're not working with clients, they're working with their own dog or they're doing some kind of sport like ring sport or schutzhund or whatever it may be, AKC comp 
confirmation or obedience and 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 the, their life is being a dog trainer they go to all the seminars and they go to all the the association groups and that's just part of their identity and it's not yours you don't feel like you fit in with any of them in fact you can't even really bring yourself to train your own dog you've already trained him he's good enough and, and that's just when you finish with your clients, you don't want to really have anything else to do with dogs for the rest of your day. You want to go to the gym, do something else. That's it. And and that's okay. That's typically what we would call a balanced life. But if you still feel internally after all of that, that you're just not a dog trainer, it may be that dog training is not for you. And, and that's okay. It's okay to admit that to yourself. Uh, you know, maybe that there's some other aspect of working with dogs that really, really lights your fire. Like for me, it was writing dog training books or helping people, you know, online and doing dog training videos and, and that type of stuff, information products in the dog training niche, in the dog training industry. Um, so, you know, you may take some time, step back a little bit and, and really ask yourself some tough questions. And if the answer is, you know, this, I, I don't see myself as a dog trainer, even though I've already been a dog trainer for several years and I've worked with all kinds of different dogs and stuff it's just not, it's just not me. Then maybe at that point you start investigating some other avenues, um, you know, finding what your passion in life really is and pursuing that. Hey, I'm Adam Katz for browningdirect.com, the dog trainer marketing agency, as well as the dog trainer marketing group on Facebook. It is free to join. You'll be amongst over 2,900 professional dog training business owners swapping secret strategies and tactics on how to grow their dog training business. Why would anybody in the right share that information? Because that's what we do. We like helping each other. We like helping people. Feel free to join at Facebook. It is, like I said, free to join the dog trainer marketing group. I'm Adam Katz. Hey, have a great week, guys. We'll talk to you soon.